test, test, test. Test, hello, yep. Good afternoon, everyone. We will start in a couple of minutes. Please take your seats. We'll be starting in 30 seconds. Dear Bayan community, welcome to our second interview session of the day. This afternoon's talk will be held with two Bayani alumni that have come back home to share their experience with us and shed some light on the topic of innovation. Our guest is Mr. Muhammad al Manai, who graduated from Bayan in 2010. He's now a practicing architect, designer, and co-founder of Shepherd Studio. He has a bachelor's degree from the University of Arts London and a master's of architecture from the University of the Creative Arts in the UK. Our second guest is Mr. Badr Awad, who graduated from Bayan in 2016. He is now an associate engineer at Bobco, the Bahrain Petroleum Company. He has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Liverpool John Moores University in the UK. Please help me welcome to the stage Mr. Ahmed Al Manai and Mr. Badr Awad. Welcome home. Thank you for being here with us. So we're gonna go right, right ahead into our subject. So um, as we know, the topic of innovation has been on the media, on the news, Every ta everybody talks about it nowadays. How are we innovating? What are we doing to innovate? Uh, there's a strong emphasis on it and there's a strong emphasis on companies and schools and institutions structuring innovations within their, um, I guess, structure and curriculum. So let's begin with the basics. How would you define innovation and how important is innovation? Hi. So um, first of all, thank you for hosting me. Um, honestly, it's really good to be back. I never really thought I'd be back here on this stage. Um, innovation, uh, I think innovation is delivering, it's a solution that delivers value. Mm -hmm. um, let me put it this way, creativity is, is kind of 
thinking of something that's creative, but innovation is the implementation of that. Okay. She would like to add something. Yeah, no worries. So um, I think innovation mainly consists of creativity and thinking outside the box. So how well you create or how creative you are and how well you think outside the box is usually how much it gives you the innovative mentality. Absolutely. So as engineers, architects, by nature of your work, um, you tend to create, engage in the you know, creative process. So how much do you engage in innovation? I mean, for me, I, I own a kind of design studio. So every single day, it's, it's almost kind of second nature now, where we have to find solutions on a daily basis for problems that we never knew existed, uh, which excites me as an architect, uh, I suppose. But it's definitely second nature to us as a uh, um, when it comes to the profession of architecture. I see. And from an engineering perspective, do you get to engage in the creative process to innovate? So mainly with the engineering or mechanical engineering, um, a lot of innovation happens uh, usually whenever there's a problem that arises. So the more problems that arises, you always try to find the best suitable solution. So depending on whether it would be more budget efficient, whether it would be more uh, effective, and uh, a lot of things come into consideration. But I can tell you as an engineering, uh, engineering point of view, the most important thing about innovation and uh, problem solving is whenever there's an issue that arises, that's when the best view comes out. I see. So uh, speaking of issues, um, so Henry Ford once said, if I had asked the public what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse, but they would have not thought of a car. So um, thinking about, about this sentence, would you say innovation comes from within or from the public or from the need? Where does it come from? I think it's a mix of all of those things. I mean, so many times there are problems that we never knew even existed. You know, if we stayed here and just relaxed and had just no thought whatsoever of any problem, we wouldn't know that there are problems. You know, I mean, look at the cell phone, for example. 150 years ago, you wouldn't even, you can't, it's not even comprehensible to a person. Yet today, it's in your pocket, in every single person's pocket. Mm -hmm. which, which blows my mind, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely the faster horse, but there are ways to kind of change the definition of a faster horse and kind of make it more convenient. Um, to people's everyday lives. So, I mean, it, I find that, specifically for me, extremely interesting. It's those problems that you don't even know exist. I mean, think of it this way. 150 years fr from today, what would be the problem? What would be the solutions? They are as incomprehensible as the cell phone to the person 150 years ago. And that, that blows my mind. Absolutely. So, would you say, it, are there boundaries to innovation? Uh, sorry, are there what? Boundaries? Is there a limit? I don't think so, no. I don't think so. I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's just uh, it's how you get there. Uh, there are no boundaries. Okay. Would you like to add something? Uh, yeah, just I totally agree with uh, everything my colleague said. Uh, mainly, a lot of these uh, issues arise whenever you ask the public for something. They would always tell you something that just the first thing that pops in their mind. The thing that differentiates innovators between uh, innovators and r like regular people, like everyday Joes, is that outside thinking of the box. So Henry Ford was an, innova in a, an innovator. He decided, okay, everyone's using these horses. They're, they're running around all the time. They're, they need food, they need water. But he decided, okay, let's get something that won't get tired. Let's build something that's going to benefit everyone without having to sacrifice the, t the labor of a horse. So that's how the car was invented. He wanted to innovate and simplify people's lives. And a lot of these innovations based on, are based on these ideas that we want to make something that's gonna help someone's life. The better innovations are usually the ones that people don't expect. So with Uber, no one decided anyone's gonna, anyone wants to ride it or hire a, a taxi. Before Uber, everyone was saying, don't get into a stranger's car. But nowadays, you get into your Uber, you have your, his name, you have all his details. 
but you've never met him in your life. So it's these innovations that people don't expect is what usually benefits everyone. Absolutely. In, in your field of work, um, how do you innovate or can you share with us an experience where you think you've innovated in the field? I mean, where do I start? Um, <laughs> Anywhere you wish. So, so uh, prior to all the pandemic and the corona stuff, um, we kind of, and you know, with all the glitter and the glamour, we're normal people. Like, we, we, we started simply, and we thought of ideas, and we knocked on doors. So um, I'm sure you guys heard of the 747 that was kind of sunk into the uh, sea. So we were a part of the master plan for the whole project. Mm -hmm. And how it started was that we were just kind of in our studio sitting, looking for projects. We, we, and this was four years ago, looking for projects. And we realized that there are artificial reefs, artificial coral reef units in Bahrain. And we looked at it and we were like, we could do something better. This, this is it. So we go and we knock on the door of a company, uh, Environment Arabia, which are phenomenal at what they do. Um, and we kind of just investigated. We asked them, look, we kind of respect everything you've been doing and we appreciate the results. But we believe along your side, we can kind of innovate this product. And that's how we got to know them. And then when the plane came to be, they thought of us as the company to kind of go to, to kind of pioneer along their side um, to make the project happen. So I think that was one of the earlier experiences of when we kind of said, okay, we kind of added value somewhere, somehow, I mean, to the to kind of coral reef in Bahrain, which is, which is, which still needs work, a lot of work. But I think just then and there, um, it was a good time for us to kind of appreciate that added value. Absolutely. Uh, obviously, I don't have as much experience in uh, engineering because I j recently just got employed, but I can tell you a really nice uh, story that I found out in Bobco. Um, recently, uh, a lot of these uh, pumps that we have in Bobco have been changing their type of seals. Now, they use these seals to prevent leakage, and they're called these gland packings. I don't know if anyone knows them, but it's using these graphite material to wrap around those seals to make sure they don't leak. Now those are very inexpensive, they're cheap. They're maybe around mm, rough balling $1,000 each. But long-term wise, they're very ineffective. They cause a lot of leaks and there's, they're very dirty in general. So uh, this type of innovation was when Bobco wanted to progress that. They wanted to find a way that would minimize the leakage, that would be cleaner and would be more long-term lasting. So they started innovating and they found out there was this new company which uh, made these type of mechanical seals. Now these mechanical seals were maybe four or five times more expensive than the uh, gland packings up front. But at the same time, they caused less issues, they caused less in maintenance, and in the long run, they would be much cheaper. So this is an also an another nice like, example of how an upfront cost of innovation benefited a company as a whole during the long term. So always, there's always ways to benefit something. And the more you progress and the more you know knowledge about this certain thing and the more you know what are the problems that arise with any certain issue, the better you're going to have an understanding in trying to innovate something that's outside the box. Thank you, thank you very much. So along the same lines, w would you say is innovation um, something spontaneous that happens or is it a process that you go through? It's, it's an instinct, I think. I mean, it's, it, it comes to, I mean, it's, it comes with experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the more you kind of try to innovate, no matter how much you fail, you become better. And I think slowly, you'll start to see it intuitively kind of being applied um, as something second nature, you know, um, when you're faced with a problem. Um, in terms of a process, I don't think there is a formal way of kind of innovating. Um, I think it's just a matter of kind of uh, um, how you solve it. I think and it's a personal experience for everyone. I mean, mm. that's, that's my take. Would you say in engineering it's a bit more process 
It's uh, certainly more process driven, but I, from what I can tell you, like the bare bones of it is necessarily finding a problem, and then the innovative way is finding the best solution. So the more innovative you are, the more out of the box thinking you are, the better it's going to help. So specifically with engineering, it's not like a category one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. It's mainly problem, solution. The innovation is what it's in between. I see. Um, how do you know if your idea to innovate is good, is good enough? You don't. And you don't. <laughs> you never know. Well, I mean, how, uh, it depends how receptive people are to it. I mean, um, I don't know. I think you, um, you guys came back from the expo. I'm not sure if you saw the chairs in the expo. Um, yes. So, so the chairs are designed based on the kind of um, the, uh, you know, the bed of nails, where you, you see this kind of kung fu guy laying on a bed of nails, claiming he's the strongest person ever. But in reality, it's because his weight is being distributed. He doesn't feel anything. It's uh, virtually straight. Um, and that's the same technique we applied with the spheres. Um, so we came up with a technique. We kind of um, um, uh, uh, w w found the right way, uh, all in Bahrain, by the way. Uh, really impressive craftsmanship here. Um, and then finally, we, we got the idea patented in the UK. But when people saw it for the first time, they were like, I'm never going to sit on that chair. It doesn't seem comfortable at all. And then the best thing is when, when people sit on the chair, instantly you see their faces like, yeah, I was wrong. And that's such a nice, satisfacti a, a nice feeling. You get a sense of satisfaction saying that, you know what? There's a sense of innovation, especially with a patent at hand. And it came out two days ago, which is fantastic. Um, but that sense of innovation, you, s you, you start to see they believe in it. You know, and that's, that's when you know, when people actually test it and try it. Yeah, that was going to be my next part of the question. You know, how do you get people to believe in your idea? See, let me put it this way. If you go to an experienced doctor and he tells you you're not going to die, you'll be so relieved. But if you go to someone who is not that experienced and he just tells you you're not going to die, so long as it says doctor, you'll be like, yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to die. <laughs> but the more the experience, the more the satisfaction. I think it's, it's a matter of trust. It's getting people to trust you, you know. It's having that um, uh, kind of experience behind you, saying that I kind of achieved this, you know. Um, I, I kind of did something. I'm not sure if it worked or not, to be very honest. Um, so we started the company out of a kind of closing, failing travel agency. It was one computer and um, 300 dinar budget, no staff, no employees. Uh, and then when we moved to our first office, I told the guys, listen, let's paint the floor yellow. They were like, why? Why would you paint the floor yellow? It's disgusting. I was like, exactly. If someone walks in and sees that your floor is yellow, he's going to instantly believe anything you say. Because he looked like the person that doesn't have any taste. Or, or, so you instantly get that credibility. Like that person would never. So the, the juxtaposition kind of puts that person in a psychological place where he says, you know what, I trust you guys. You guys seem like you know what you're doing. And I'm not sure if it worked, but I hope it worked. But that was the kind of tactic at hand. But now, thankfully, with the experience now we have, more people trust us. Um, and it's still a hard pill to swallow sometimes. Because we come up with very radical ideas, we knock on doors independently, and a lot of them just shut the door in our face, and that's the reality of things. Mm -hmm. But that one door that opens, that makes all the difference. I see. In terms of engineering, is it more, um, you know, customer-driven or is it more cost-driven? This backup of an idea. So usually, whenever any idea comes up, uh, a lot of issues are taken under consideration, like the cost, the speed, the effectability, and all these things come into consideration when it comes to planning. Usually at the planning part, as an engineer, you always think of it as, what do we do now? What's the first step? And these type of things are going, are, are gonna take under, uh, are gonna be uh, followed depending on the target. So if your target is to build something, for example, or innovate into something that's going to be very effective, you sacrifice the cost because you realize that you want to spend as much money to make it as effective and as uh, efficient as possible. 
but at the same time, if you want something to be reliable and you want something to give you the same results all the time, that's when costs had to be taken under consideration. You have to realize like, okay, this is going to have to be efficient cost-wise for everyone to start using. Um, mainly as an engineer, I've, I've worked in both uh, the medical department as a biomedical engineer and uh, in Bobco. And I noticed that a lot of these uh, things were correlating between the two types of engineering. Now, with the medical sector, there's these type of features that everyone wants to come up with an another brand saying, we have this breakthrough, breakthrough uh, device or this, this company has an amazing results range. And these type of strategies always have to be taken under consideration. Specifically as an engineer, you always have to look at the technicality point of view. And that's mainly the, the, bane, the, sorry, the, uh, the bone, the bare bone structure of engineering. Thank you for that. So my next question is going to be about why innovation slash creativity is hard. You know, when you give people time and you tell them, come up with an idea, you know, a lot of times people get stuck. You know, wh where do you start? I think um, maybe I address, I address the hard part from the start part because it's subjective to the problem. Okay. But um, if anyone ever joins a gym, you'll realize that the first day is horrible. The second day gets better. Actually, the first week is horrible. Uh, the week after gets better, the week after that. It's because you're exercising a muscle every time you solve a problem. And, you know, these are not textbook problems. They come, and, and, and this can't be taught. I mean, they'll teach you kind of the principles, uh, kind of the, the skill sets, but you need to kind of put those together to be able to solve specific problems. I think it's a matter of just exercising that muscle and mm -hmm. just being able to kind of use it on a daily basis in your everyday life and you'd be surprised how how um, how how you c how how you use it in your everyday life and just appreciating it can go a long way so i think that's that's going to make it easier to start i see so practice makes perfect that's eventually absolutely, that's a better way of putting it yes yeah. Uh, with regards to uh, where to start, that's everyone's issue. I'm, I finished university and the first thing I thought was, okay, so where do I start? Where do I start applying for jobs? How do I start applying for jobs? The basic concept of everything, you're trying to do anything in life, you always try to think, how do I start? Now, there's no necessary, ne there's no necessary specific order of how to start anything. But from what I can tell you is the best option is, is usually following your gut feeling. Now, if you want to work in any other department, if you want to change degrees, or if you want to start focusing on something different, the main purpose of it is to find something that you want to do and you have a lot of creativity in, or a lot of passion. Because passion is, or sorry, innovation gives birth to passion and vice versa. Without passion, you can't be innovative. Because if you follow your passion, you're gonna start thinking outside the box. You're gonna be more creative with those thoughts. And the main, in my opinion, the main way, the main thing that I use to deal with any time I have any path in life is to follow what is the most basic thing I can do. Start a CV or look at the best uh, companies to apply to. It's always trying to find the most basic thing and then work your way up. Thank you very much. So, um, speaking of uh, skills, you know, you've mentioned skills, you know, that, that would lead uh, someone to become an innovator or be able to practice, you know, creating things day in and day out. What set of skills would you say our students need to develop in order for them to become better innovators in the future? Patience is definitely one of them. Being able to admit that you're wrong is very important as well. And I'm sure there's a long, 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 long list. Um, I think just being honest with yourself, knowing where you stand as a person, and then growing from there, okay? Um, because, because, and then you have to think of it as, I mean, I think that's honestly, just, just kind of being able to persevere as well. You know, um, knowing that you're not the best, you'll never be the best, but you're really, 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 really good, is healthy. You know, it just takes off that arrogance. 
because uh, uh, the thing is, you're never the best. There's always going to be someone better. I bet 10 years from today, someone's going to sit here and I'm going to be burned out somewhere, you know? And that's what you need to kind of have that mentality, you know? You, you, are, you are independent, you're here to add value and in your own specific way. And never compare yourself with anyone else because that's not healthy. I think those things just fundamentally, uh, when you want to start anything, help. Great, thank you. Would you like to share your insight? Uh, yeah, so the best way to start anything and having a good set of skills is usually just building a good foundation. Before you want to start anything, before you want to start an innovation or you want to be creative about something, make sure you have a good background and a good foundation. Because the better foundation you have, the more creative you can be. Creativity, everyone here can be creative in any type of thing they're passionate about. But the more foundation of knowledge you have to defend that, the more you're going to be knowledgeable and the more innovative anything you create can be. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, speaking of Bayan, and we're in Bahrain Bayan School today, how would you say the school prepared you to you know, be who you are today? You know, uh, I used to sit there, and then when someone come up, they bring an alumni and like, oh, this guy says he's proud that he's a Bayani, you know? You'll only know that you're proud, you're a Bayani, when you actually go into the world and you meet other people graduating from other schools. I am in debt to this school. I honestly, it, 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 uh, and I wasn't an A student, so don't think in that, like, oh, this guy might have been an A student. I wasn't. Okay, I, I, I struggled so much, but still, even in my struggle, it helped me, uh, the, everything was there, you know? Um, and, and things that you think they're not good for you, uh, you come back and you're like, you know what? I appreciate that essay, you know? Because now I can write, you know? <laughs> and you'd be surprised how many people can't write a basic paragraph. You come out into the world because you, 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 you're comparing yourself with each other, remember that. But the moment you step foot out of Bayan, instantly, everyone else, has to write the same paragraph. Then you will say, no, you know what? I'm definitely putting my kids in Bayan. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's amazing. What about you, Badr? Um Well, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Ahmed that uh, I'm in debt to the school. The school has taught me so many things. The experiences I've been through, the, the lessons I've learned. Um, I don't know if you guys know about the physics, cl the physics club. It was started off with me and a couple of friends. And we built a go-kart here in school. And if you can see the running track around, we drove the go-kart a couple of times. And we had some of the teachers also drive it around. And at the time when we were building it, we were starting off with nothing. We didn't have any funding. We didn't have anything to build it on. And I remember we went to uh, Ms. Mayla Kebi and we told her um, we, we need some help with, uh, with the, the physics club. And she was like, don't worry. Do whatever you can. Try to make the best thing you can, represent Bayan, and make us proud. And that's exactly what we did. We weren't competing against anyone. anyone. No, one el no one else did a go-kart, no other school. So we necessarily started leading the charge. And I remember from that time, I've learned a lot about mechanisms, the way cars work, the shaft, the wheels, the, the body and the style. All those type of things I, I learned from here in Bayan. And from that, I, I felt like from that specific experience, I loved engineering. At the time, I was very iffy about which type of engineering I should go to. And because of building that go-kart, that really gave me the passion to want to build into mechanical type of engine, uh, engineering, where it's a lot of rotating equipment instead of stationary. So with Bayon necessarily, I just loved everything. And specifically with the, with the teachers, the teachers really helped out no matter what. Uh, one of the best teachers, in my opinion, or one of them, like, can't, uh, sorry, can't keep them up there, was uh, Mr. Anthony Fayad. Now, I wasn't the best student, and I wasn't necessarily, like, the straight A's, but I wasn't a good enough student, and I think he saw the potential in me, as well as many other teachers, and they, he always pushed me to do better. So, specifically with Bayon, they always want their students to be better. And when you do graduate from Bayan, you're going to realize that all these small things that those teachers pushed you to do, 
made you miles in front of everyone from Bahrain and outside. Thank you so much, both of you, for these kind words. Um, I, I would like to, to continue along the same line, and since the students are here with us and many of them will be watching this later on, what would you say are the classes that, to become an innovator, you know, students must pay additional attention to, you know, engage in, you know, and don't take it um, to be a burden, but rather as a challenge to work with? I think the classes you're good at, I think that's... The uh, classes you're good at. Yeah. I where mean, your passion what, what lies. you're passionate about, where, where you, where they, I mean, if you have the best teacher in front of you, if you have no interest in the subject, you're just going to get, you're going to scrape it. The classes that you're most interested in, I think that's, because that's you can innovate in math, you can innovate in physics, you know, there are, there are, uh, there are physicists in Bahrain that innovate, and I know them personally. Okay, um, so 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 it's it's where you are interested in. You know, I think that's that's the better answer. Because if if we kind of t just say art or math or or, or Arabic, mm -hmm. it's subjective. You know, um, and and you can even innovate in, in Arabic. You know, I know people who are innovating in the world of psychology when it comes to Arab kids. You mm -hmm. know, we're we're extremely left out. You know, we're, we're taking these Western kind of ideas and applying them to the people, to people who speak a specific or very complicated language. You know, and there's still innovation, there's room to innovate there too, you know. Um, so I think where you're good at, I think that's, those, that's the better answer. Yes, yeah. would you agree? Uh, sorry, could you just ref rephrase yeah, or we, say we the question We were talking again? about innovation and classes, which classes should students, you know, pay, you know, additional attention to and his response was that, you know, the, the classes that they're interested in, the classes that they have passion for, because obviously you can innovate, you know, um, everywhere. It's not just for an art class or, you know, because students uh, associate creativity with art, but in reality, you can be creative anywhere. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, 100%. <coughs> always. Passion always brings upon uh, innovation. So if you're passionate about art, you might, uh, sorry, uh, if you're passionate about art, you might take uh, IB <coughs> art and you might ha learn so many type of styles. I personally took uh, IB art and I love, from my research there, I took uh, a lot of research about Pablo Picasso and I really loved his type of, uh, his type of art. And it's those type of small things that you're passionate about is what gives you those innovation mentality. So the best strategy is passion brings innovation. And do what you're passionate about. Before we open the floor to questions from students, uh, would you like to just give uh, the students here today, parents at home, um, our guests, any advice? Uh, I'll say something, and I think it's the realest thing you will ever hear as a student. And it's sad, it's very sad, uh, and exciting at the same time, like all good, sad, exciting things. Um, when you are conditioned, so everyone next to you, you, you've known for the past 10, I don't know how long years, you're, you've, you've been built in this micro environment, right? The moment you graduate, you're on your own. Everything you've learned here with the relationships you had with your teachers, with your students, with colleagues, you will be applying out there. Your friend circles will change. This is a new chapter, because when I graduated, instantly, in a day, everything I knew wasn't. And all that was left was my skill set, who I am, my small friend group, and where I'm about to go. Scariest thing ever. But at the same time, it's exciting, because Anyone here who thinks, well, uh, la, I'm not good. No, you're great. There's no one to compare yourself with, Tara. You're not in a room. You're not in within four walls, Tara. But I think that's very important. You need to understand that there's more to life. And you need to start investing in yourself now because there are more important things you should be caring about that will come. 
Thank you so much. Yes. That's it? Um, same, same type of idea, but what I can specifically focus on is in university, you're really going to find your true self and what you're really passionate about. When you're sitting down next to some strangers studying something, it could be anything, physics, math, or engineering, or medicine, that's when you're really going to find out that who you are as a person and what you're truly passionate about. So the best, type, the best, uh, the best uh, advice I can give to every one of you is specifically when you do go to university, that's when you're gonna be proud of the person you are and what the person you're going to be. Thank you so much. That have, it was great, thank you so much. So we're gonna open the floor uh, to questions right now. If you have a question for either of our guests, please raise your hand and we'll pass the microphone to you. No questions? It normally takes a second. Uh, yeah. There's a question over there. Yeah. Okay, we have a question over there. Yep. How does it feel to be back in school? Feels good. <laughs> Feels good being here and seeing you. <laughs> Inshallah, one day you'll be here seeing someone else. Lama, you come up with an idea. Um, what are the steps you take to actually uh, make it a reality? So make it a good idea. Um, okay, so, so when you come up with an idea, um, I don't know, maybe you can um, add, add to this, but it depends on the problem. So, so if you have a business idea or you have a kind of um, a, a, a culinary idea where you want to come up with a specific kick, I think it's just kind of breaking it down into steps, um, seeing how to tackle the problem, and just doing it step by step at your own pace, because slowly you'll get faster. Uh, just like to add on that point is, usually whenever you think of an idea, you can't convince other people of your idea unless you're certain of it. And once you do believe in your certain idea, that's when you're gonna start progressing and flying towards everything into making an innovative solution. So always believe in yourself so you can make others believe. Thank you. Uh, first off, I would like to say thank you both and your inspiration to uh, uh, Bayan students. And uh, thank you especially, Badr, your inspiration to physics HL class of 2021 uh, with, uh, with the Go Cup. Uh, I would like to ask what uh, what implications of uh, the physics class would like uh, transfer over transfer over to your career and also to your uh, uh, to your education in, uh, to your education in university? Maybe maybe you'd be more suitable to answer that. Sorry. Um, so he's asking how could physics apply to your daily kind? How could you transfer that over to um, your daily profession? Is that is that the question? Yeah. Yes. So um, I could tell you that uh, I personally didn't say I, I took uh, at the time like half IB, but I, I took IB physics and IB math. And I feel like those two IB classes really helped me with foundation. Now, having that knowledge and foundation is what gives you a good foundation to realize what you want in the future, what type of specific engineering you want. I took in uh, foundation as a general type of engineering. I didn't specify which type of engineering. But those classes from HL physics and HL math, they're gonna give you, for example, or standard level, they're gonna give you a good idea of what type of engineering you would want. Because during foundation, you're gonna have everything solid from foundation-wise, but that's when you're gonna start to realize what you wanna focus on in, type of, in terms of engineering, whether it be mechanical, civil, or structural, uh, or chemical. Having that knowledge, uh, having that background knowledge is what's going to give you a good idea of what type of engineer you want to get into. Thank you. We have one more. Um, I know that you guys are still uh, are young and pretty new to your careers, but has there come a time where... We can't hear. Honestly. Has there come a time where you felt like you succeeded and felt proud of yourself? Um, succeeded or not succeeded? Succeeded. I'm proud of myself. 
Um, I mean, it's nice to see. It's nice to see. Yeah, I think I think we're very proud. I mean, it's 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 a very personal feeling. You know, um, you kind of get you get to the finish line, and it's almost nostalgic. You know, um, it's almost you start saying, wow, we actually helped put a 747 in the ocean. And it's just, you need to kind of actually realize that this actually happened. And, and instantly you start saying, you know what, I'm proud. And it's very hard to di digest, you know, um, which is a good thing. You know, I think uh, I, I personally, I don't let it last. Uh, get proud, move on to the next thing. Um, and I'll leave pride till when I'm older. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess on a personal level, I, I, I'm very proud. I'm very proud. I, th I definitely think I still can do better, but I'm proud of myself. And as, it, as should you be. If you want to add. So obviously, I don't have the same type of uh, skills yeah. as a 747 underwater. But uh, I remember during my university day days, um, they took us as an internship, or they took me and a couple of students to an internship to a very... Uh, uh, very high profile uh, steel making company. They would make uh, steel cut parts for Rolls Royce engines, plane engines. You could say it's the same type as a 747. But um, at the time I was there, just in my head, I wanted to go just to learn. But I was there and I realized that some of their laser cutters were running f longer processes that didn't need to be a, a long process. They could just be done quicker, depending on how fast you would go, the technical t point of view the higher the heat, the faster it would be, the more deformations, the, w the worse the metal will become, that's uh, outside. But I went there with that main idea of wanting to just learn. Mm -hmm. But from what I benefited from that company was, I told them the type of tactics and the type of styles that they should use to make their laser cutting processes more effective. Mm -hmm. And from that mil billion dollar company, I, me, I, I didn't even graduate university yet, and I managed to help that company. So when I went back to university and they were sending the university emails thanking them that I helped them, I was ecstatic. I was so proud that even as a person that doesn't have experience in the job field, as a, as a still university student, I managed to go outside the box, try to find a solution to something that they didn't even know that that was there. And that's the small things that make you proud. Even if you think that you're a university student or you're just a high school student, you can do things that you can't imagine. And there's experience is always important, but at the same time, having a passion is what's going to embrace innovation. And that's going to make you the proudest part, is that you're the one who did th this certain thing. And, and I think in terms of pride, I think he's, he's addressing a very important point. I think um, we're conditioned to learn that pride comes with results. But you should be proud. Regardless, it, it comes with confidence, and that's what makes you confident. You know, a thousand times you walk into a, co a room and I'm shaking, you know, not believing, hoping that they'll just say, we like the idea, you know, and, and they, they, they do, you know, and, and I realize that, no, wait, I should come into the room proud, you know, it's, it's, it's that, it's something that you should have, I think. Mean, Generally, not 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 a, it's not a result of something. It's something that you should have now and learn to kind of appreciate and tie it to confidence. And then you'll be able to kind of suggest things similar to how he's suggested something as great as you know this sense of it, this bit of innovation to a billion dollar company. You know, um, and 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 it's that confidence. A thousand times people have ideas and they just stay quiet. You know, and you shouldn't. You should you should kind of be proud of what your idea is. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. Just admit it. You learn from it. Uh, just a thought uh, from my side is an one problem that I had during my time, and I really regretted it, was not being proud enough of yourself. Uh, yeah, sorry, not being proud enough of yourself. When you do graduate school and you're off to university, you should be proud that you graduated high school. Don't always think about what's next, what's next, what's next. So what you need to do is when you finish university, be proud of yourself. When you finish school, be proud of yourself. Anytime you finish a huge milestone, anytime you realize that you made a huge change in any type of workforce, in work, or in anything, always be proud of yourself. Because when you're proud of yourself, you're always going to strive to do more and more. 
It's this type of feeling of just wanting to be more proud of yourself and overdoing yourself the whole time. So always stop and smell the roses, enjoy your time whenever you finish a milestone and be proud of yourself. Absolutely. Do we have any more questions? Well, on this note, I would like to thank you on behalf of the whole Bahraini community. Can I ask you a question? Sorry. Yes, of course. I of have course. a question. Could you raise your hand if you're interested in being an architect? If you're interested in being an architect. Yes. Yeah, so who wants to be an architect here? Engineer? Cool. I have to say one thing. So you in school... What you're doing now is getting to the university you want to get. It's that foot in, right? So that's what you're, get, what, that's what you're doing here now. Obviously, the skill sets, whatever you're learning, this is inevitable. But your goal is to get into university. Don't be afraid and don't think for a second that the university is going to be so hard that I won't be able to actually do it. I don't know math. I don't know physics. They will teach you. It's not a year worth of course. It's four years. The first year, they'll hold your hand. Second year, they'll hold it a little less tighter until they can let you go. So don't think that you need to be extremely prepared because if you had the skills of being an architect or an engineer now, you wouldn't need university. A lot of students think that they want to be, the, uh, in order for me to be an engineer or an architect or anything, they need to have some sense, of, you just need to have interest get to that university you want to get to and they will teach you everything you need to know thank you very much thank you both for your insight thank you and uh, thank you for the positive vibes again on behalf of our school and the community we're really grateful to have you with us today and we'd like to just give you a token of our appreciation from mr mithat Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. We can take a Thank you so much. full Thank photo. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Just escort the students back to class. Thank you.